USAMLE Step 1 has changed from its well-known numerical grading system to a pass-fail system. These changes will take into effect on January 1st, 2022. I made this video for everyone, MDs, DOs, and IMGs, to highlight the pros and cons and to tell you how to better adapt to this new change. This change was made into effect by the USMLE co-sponsors, the FSMB, who is the Federation of State Medical Boards, and the MBME, or the National Board of Medical Examiners. Now, what are the changes that have been made? Well, first is the well-known numerical grading system that's been changed to a pass-fail system. However, this is only for Step 1 and not Step 2 CK. Now, the maximum number of attempts that anyone can take on their USMLE is 4 instead of 6. Now this has really changed the life of most people because looking at the USMLE data reports, 96% of the people have passed on their first attempt in 2017 and 2018. Lastly, one must pass step 1 before taking step 2 CS, which kind of makes sense. Looking at the USMLE website, they say that the co-sponsors recognize that an ideal system for evaluating candidates for residency is holistic. Now this means a lot of things. Till date, the Step 1 score has been the most determining factor to evaluate a candidate for residency by residency program directors. But there are a lot more qualities that should be taken into consideration when assessing an applicant for residency. This is why the USMLE believes that changing the system to a pass-fail system can reduce the overemphasis on USMLE performance, whereas it will retain its purpose to attain medical licensing and eligibility. Now, it's said that they changed this into a pass-fail system to reduce the anxiety of medical students. Which may be true, but I believe the anxiety is a symptom of a whole different problem. I mean, I do agree the exponential weight placed on this marginally clinically relevant exam has resulted in a hyper-competitive nature amongst medical students. But I believe that the anxiety and the hyper-competitive nature stems from the limited amount of residency seats and the surplus of applicants. Also, without the score in the picture, there are less objective measures to assess a candidate by. Now, when submitting a residency application, your experience is divided into three components. You have your work experience, your volunteer experience, and your research experience. So now one must focus on all these different aspects to fortify the resume and to be the perfect applicant for residence. Now let's get into the pros and cons of this change. And if you found this content useful, please leave a like and subscribe for more USMLE content in the future. This will definitely affect student wellness. The epidemic of medical school burnout is largely centered around USMLE Step 1. Students tend to opt out of the institutional curriculum in favor of intensive exam preparation, and this is largely due to the stress and anxiety of the exam. Now, with Step 1 being pass-fail, it provides the students a chance to relax a little bit more in their first and second years of medical school and focus more on their institutional curriculum. Now, this second pro is the most important in my opinion. Step 1 isn't a perfect depiction of how smart a candidate is. It's an 8-hour exam that focuses more on basic science principles instead of clinical knowledge. I know many doctors that are good at what they do, but they didn't do well on Step 1, largely because the determinants of your score is multifactorial. It depends on so many different factors like whether you're a good test taker or not, whether you slept well the night before, or whether you're anxious. I believe that me amongst many people I know had their score reduced just because we were so anxious during the test. With Step 2 retaining its numerical grading system, it provides some objective measures for residency program directors to assess a candidate by. Step 2 will definitely provide us a better assessment tool just because this exam is more clinically relevant and it's easier to prepare for than Step 1. I do believe that the scores will be less inflated because there will be a harder grading curve and people will take Step 2 a little bit more serious, but I truly believe that Step 2 being the baseline objective measure to assess a candidate is much better than Step 1. Now the change in the system will also give rise to many cons. First and foremost, Knowing the right people will heavily outweigh hard work. Students will spend more time on networking and getting to know the right people instead of studying. Now this change has the biggest effect on IMGs, DOs, and Caribbeans. According to program directors, American grads are subconsciously preferred just because they've been more exposed to the American system and because they can better communicate with patients. But IMGs and DOs would use this step 1 score as a chance to stand out amongst their American peers. Now this next one is more of my personal opinion than an established con. I believe that the fear and anxiety that step 1 put into medical students would force them into learning their basic principles so well that it would make them a better doctor ultimately. This focus will be shifted onto step 2, which is more clinically relevant, but a good doctor does need to have a good grasp of his basic sciences. 
With the pass-fail change, LORs and clerkship grades become a lot more relevant than they should be, largely because this is highly subjective. Some institutions or rotations makes it a lot easier to get honors, whereas others make it a lot more difficult. Therefore, this traps the medical students to their own system and makes these grades not comparable. The medical school that a candidate went to will definitely affect their chances into getting into a residence. Top tier schools like Harvard, Johns Hopkins, Yale will definitely be given a higher priority than a person from a lower tier medical school. Now what changes do you need to make to better adapt to this system? First, monetize your away rotations. Try to go meet people, create opportunities, open doors for yourself, make good impressions, talk to more doctors. It's a competitive world out there and you need to be on the top to thrive. Till date, research is more required for fellowship than residency, but I think it should no longer be an option anymore. Every medical student needs to be more proactive and ask residents, fellows, attendings if they need any help on research. There's always some scout work to be done, but physicians don't have the time to do it. This includes literature search, data collection, writing. Don't worry on your ability to do the research because it's a learning process. The more you do it, the better you get. Now, American graduates have always put focus on building their resume, but it's always been secondary for IMGs. So now you should focus more on observerships or whatever little volunteer experience you can get. If you have the opportunity to go to America during your summer break to do a rotation or an observership, you should definitely do it. Look into what different hospitals there are in America and do some research on what different professors there are and what research they're doing. And then send hundreds of emails if they need any help and that you'd be happy to help them. Out of the hundred emails you send, even if one person accepts, that's an opportunity you just made for yourself and this will go on your resume. If you believe that there are more ways to adapt to this pass-fail system that I haven't covered, please leave it in the comment section below. And if you found this content helpful, please leave a like and subscribe for more quality USMLA content in the future.